Hey folks, welcome back. So it's been a while since I posted my last video, and I apologize again for not getting more fiberglass work covered. I've just moved to Colorado, and um, working out of a smaller garage than I was before. Haven't really had a chance to do too much glassing. Um, but I will get back to that, and that is something I'm still passionate about. In the meantime, um, we're enjoying the, the wonderful Colorado mountains, and really trying to take advantage of everything that we've got to offer here. And uh, my son and I uh, are going on a hunting scouting expedition this Saturday. Uh, we're going to go off into the woods, into an area that we did a bunch of research on. And we think we can find both muleys and turkey there. Um, so we're going to go scout the area. Um, we're fairly recent transplants, so we don't have a tag. Um, so this is really just an expedition to get a sense of the lay of the land and decide whether or not the GMU is one that we might want to file for a tag on next season. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the equipment that we're bringing. I know there's a million videos posted on YouTube about the kinds of things people carry off into the woods, and there's probably a million people and a million and one opinions. <clears throat> um, the reason I, I, I like to have kind of a hybrid collection here is that we've got kind of a hybrid condition. A lot of people post about what they go on a hiking trip with, right? So they're going on the Appalachian Trail or something. They're going to be gone for six months, and what do they carry? And that's great. That's fine. There's value in that. Um, but we're not going on a trail. Uh, we're going off a trail. In fact, we're going as far from a trail as we can get in a one-day hike. Um, so we're probably going to be going about eight miles, and we're going straight off the beaten path where nobody goes. And so the kinds of things we carry, we're not planning an overnight, but you have to plan for an emergency overnight just in case, in case you get stuck or something happens or the weather changes, which happens very quickly here in the mountains. Um, so we're, we're trying to keep that in mind. The other thing is that we're going very, very little into what is a very, very vast wilderness. The Colorado Rockies are just tremendous. It's so broad uh, and so tall, it's hard to really describe them uh, without actually going out into them. And uh, it's interesting, they're very different from the mountains on the Appalachian Trail. They're very young. You know, you think of the, the Rockies as being really old, and they're not. Um, they're actually half the age of the Appalachian Trail, and I'm not a geologist, so it might be more than half the age, I'm not sure, but hundreds of million years younger than the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Trail mountains... Uh, even the mountains in New Hampshire, which are 5,000 feet, some of the biggest on the trail, are um, many hundreds of millions of years older. And that's why they're shorter. They've been worn down. Uh, erosion, the ice ages, and all the rest of that has worn them smooth. So you've got all that granite, and it's all steady, big old rocky boulders, and the trail kind of works its way through them. And that's one kind of territory. Out here, out west, um, the mountains are very friable. Uh, it's kind of funny walking up into them. You'd think you're expecting, you know, these big boulder things. And really what you have is an awful lot of sand and gravel and pebbles and small rocks and shale and slides and things like that. It's um, It can be treacherous walking around up there because um, the mountains are young and crumbling and still going through that early process of wearing away the weak stuff on the outside and on the top. So we're going only a tiny bit into the woods, um, but we're going to be well away from other people. I have a map of where we're headed uh, without going through coordinates or anything. There is a trail that goes up and off into the woods, but we're not going that way. We're going this way. Uh, and what we're going to do is work our way over to a creek and a lake that I found that looks pretty interesting as a spot to go explore. And it's interesting. We're only going to be three or four miles away from that. But if you look, there's a ring of mountains and cliffs right along here, a ring around the back, and a ring around this side. And what that means is that we're not going to be able to see civilization. No cell phone. Uh, you know, no fear of going off the grid anyway. But definitely no cell phone, so no rescue that way. Uh, and no people. You know, I fully expect we'll go out there. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw somebody. It is hunting season, and we will be wearing our orange. Um... But I would also not be surprised at all if we go out there and we don't see a soul all day. And what that means is that if you get stuck and you're a 40-year-old man with a 12-year-old boy, you got to make sure that anything that might happen to you, you know, we're going to be going to around 11,000 feet here in the mountains. And uh, you got to make sure anything that happens to you, you're able to deal with. Uh, and your 12-year-old boy is able to deal with. So 
I take it pretty seriously. Um, we don't overpack. Uh, we don't bring things we don't think we really need. But uh, we do bring a lot of useful stuff. So I uh, just figured I'd run through what that is and my thoughts on what we need. Here I got a lot of information. Um, I'm, a, I'm a researcher. So I like to keep track of a lot of different things. I have a lot of different maps and different versions. Uh, some game maps, game migration maps and things like that. Elevation maps. We've got a route really well planned out. We've studied the satellite photos. So both my son and I know where we're going, what the plan is, and what some of our options are if we run into trouble. Um, I've got the usual, you know, equipment. You've got to be able to start the car, so keys and wallet and all the rest of that, sunglasses. That's always important. And because we're scouting, I've got both a pair of binoculars for glassing and a really good digital camera. Um, the binoculars are no great shakes. They're 7x35s. Uh, just a, you know, average pair of bushnels. Nothing special. Um, but they work pretty good. And uh, even though they don't quite have the range of a $1,000 pair, I don't have $1,000, and I own these, and they work for me. So I'm pretty happy with them. You got a belt, because you got to carry a belt knife. And again, nothing special. And I'm, you know, y'all will probably laugh at me. It's an old timer. And you know why I bought it? Because it was $25 on sale. Cabela's had this guy on sale, and boy, <laughs> is that a... <laughs> 100 years ago, that might have been a stylish knife. These days, I know everybody's carrying around black fiberglass handle, tactical knives, and belt, uh, boot knives, and things like that. But I'll tell you what, it's a piece of steel. It sharpens pretty good, holds an edge, and uh, <laughs> I haven't had it all that long, but uh, it has served me pretty well. So you, ne you need some sort of cutting tool when you get out there. There's all kinds of things you might need to get into to cut. So I've got it, and it works well for me, and I spent $25 on it, and you may laugh at it, but I'm pretty proud. Um, my son will be carrying this, which doesn't look like much. Uh, it is just a typical Leatherman multi-tool, but you'd be surprised how useful those things are. Um, you want to crimp a fishing sinker or do anything along those lines, just a little bit of a pair of pliers or a a screwdriver or something like that does come in handy and he sure likes this and this was eight dollars and it's funny you know I know a lot of people spend three hundred dollars on some pretty fancy equipment ah I'm a Yankee I'll admit it I'm, I'm new to Colorado I'm a Yankee and Yankees are a lot of us are pretty frugal you know I see a deal I go for the deal and if that deal includes seven tools for six dollars I'm a happy Yankee so uh, that's what we're carrying. He's pretty happy with it. He's gotten some mileage out of it, and that's where we'll be. Um, Got to have a compass. We actually have two compasses because my cell phone has one in it. We're way off grid, but that doesn't mean I'm an idiot, and I'm going to leave the cell phone at home. Um, the cell phone does have a pretty good compass in it. It does work pretty well. It does calibrate to this one. This is a nice Sunto, you know, just pretty typical Boy Scout category compass, but it works and it does the job. It's got the, you know, glow-in-the-dark ring, so I, I always like to have that. Uh, it's got plenty of other stuff, too. I don't know that I've ever actually measured anything with this, but it works and it points north. Um, and, uh, yeah, so got the compass, got a, got a backup plan for that. We got satellite maps and everything that we've downloaded. That's why we're bringing the battery pack. I know there's a lot of people that'll sneer on that, too. You know, you got plenty of technology here, but, um, you know, I, I think it's silly to leave a tool behind. You know, there's the only useless tool is the one you didn't bring with you. And that's one of the comments about going out of these woods here is we will have a pack, and we are not planning an overnight. This is a, a one-day out-and-back trip. So, you know, it might even seem like I'm overpacking, but like I said, you know, if I have some kind of health issue, I've got to make sure that we got all the tools there to deal with it. My son can either go get help or somehow get me out. So, uh, you know, I think about all that kind of stuff. It matters. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're, we're going on a scouting mission here. Yes, I'm bringing a cell phone charger because I want to be able to take shots and video and I want to be able to, you know, maybe make some notes and keep track of where we are and, and put some some pins down for some likely places that we want to hunker down next season and that kind of stuff. You know, when the snow falls, it's unseasonably warm here in Colorado this week. Um, unseasonable by about 20 degrees. So, you know, I'm sure that's throwing everybody off hunt-wise, but for us, that's good. It means there's actually almost no snow in the mountains yet. We've had a couple of snow falls up there, uh, but nothing stuck and nothing stayed. So um, this is kind of an opportunity as far as I see it. I mean, we're going into November, so this is unseasonable weather. And I view it as an opportunity to kind of keep track of some places that you can't see once the snow's down. 
So, uh, you know, looking at terrain and cover and things like that, looking at the territory, looking at stuff that the deer will be browsing for, digging into that snow. Yeah, I think this will be a good chance to take note of all that. And I plan to use my cell phone and my camera and things like that to take those notes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a paper note writer, but uh, they don't seem to last and they don't hold up real good for me. So I'll be using those devices and I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm bringing a charger out to keep them going. Um, I got a bundle of paracord here. Paracord, you know, very popular, very practical, very eminently useful tool. You can do about anything with it. And I have not woven a bracelet, a belt, or an anklet, or God only knows what else people do with it. Monkey fists and stuff like that. I have not done that. Why? Because I don't want to have to unravel it to use it. Um, I think it's pretty cool that you can carry safety equipment on your belt and survive even if you don't have your pack with you, but I'm gonna have my pack with me, and boy, that is a convenient way to carry the paracord. It only weighs a couple ounces. It's probably a quarter pound, if that, and uh, it's a whole length of it, uh, straight out of the store. I didn't spend a real lot, and I'm, again, frugal and happy to be carrying it around like that. This is a quick, convenient, easy way to carry it. I, I think all the different techniques for making the bracelets and everything is great, you know, I applaud anybody that can do that. I am no weaver. So um, that is not for me. And I'm going to just carry it this way, and I'm happy to have it. Um, also carrying some hand warmers. Uh, the weather around here changes really quick. Um, we are not overdressing uh, because it is unseasonably warm. But the weather can change 20, 30 degrees in the mountains in about an hour uh, if you get a, a front moving through or some good stiff wind. So um, it is pretty important to carry some heat source and these are great. I mean, they're cheap. They're ungodly cheap. They're probably 25 cents a piece if you buy them in bulk. They last, and they're not kidding, they last seven hours. And they work real good. It comes in a pair and a pack. And we're bringing a couple of pairs, probably four pairs out here. And uh, you can stick them in your pockets. You can stick them in your boots. You get your feet wet. We've got waterproof boots, of course. But you get your feet wet. You want to dry them out. Or you're just starting to shiver a little bit. You know, chuck a couple pair in there. They say not to do that, but... Hey, in an emergency, you know, you, you get warmth where you get it, right? Uh, and to that end, an extra pair of socks. I always bring an extra pair of socks. One for my boy and one for me. Um, he, yeah, he's 12. He's got smaller feet. Those do fit him. Um, so extra pair of socks. These are the padded versions on both insulated socks. Good, good pair of socks will last you a long, long while. And I, I, I strongly believe, honestly, I would leave all this behind and still bring the socks if I had to. I'd stuff them in my pockets. Just because, you know, you get halfway through the day, your feet start getting a little sore. You don't even think your feet are wet. You don't even realize they're damp. You change your pair of socks, it changes your whole day. I, I'm, I'm not kidding. Get about halfway through your hike, change your socks, and try it out, and you will see the difference. I know experienced hikers will be nodding their heads right now. So um, this is an interesting little safety thing. It's a, it's a two-person bivy. It's just a thermal blanket. Um, I got a safety kit. You know, I... People, people laugh at some of these emergency kits, you know, these, uh, these kind of packaged products. Uh, Saul is one of those, you know, packaged product kind of companies. And I know that people like to build their own kits and their own bug out bags and stuff like that. And I respect that. Um, but you know what? As a product, and I am not shilling, they're not paying me a dime, I got to say, this is a pretty small, convenient package. And I like the fact that it's a two person. You're out with somebody else. You get stuck in something. Uh, you don't even realize when it happens and you start shivering, you, it gets late at night and you're having trouble and whatever else. Uh, hypothermia kills more people than bears, grizzlies, mountain lions, and everything else put together. So um, definitely make sure you got some emergency way of keeping yourself warm. We are not hiking overnight, so we're not bringing a tent. We're not bringing sleeping bags, ground pads, blankets, pillows, any of that kind of stuff. This is a day hike. What this is for is that weather changes, some snow starts falling, something happens, and I'm, I break my leg, or he does, or something like that. And you got to leave somebody sitting there while you go get help. You sit still, you get cold. You get cold, you freeze to death. And it happens fast. You get wet, you fall in water, anything along those lines, you need to dry out and get warm, you need some way of doing that. This thing can save your life faster than any knife or string or anything else. So I definitely am a big believer in that. And, you know, like I said, you know, we're carrying a backpack. I'm reasonably strong. I got no reason to leave stuff at home. I'm carrying my knife sharpening tool. Just a simple stone. It's a water stone. 
could be used with oil, but I use it with water. So just something to keep the knife thing. You know, you get your knife dull, you can't cut shit, so you gotta be able to sharpen it. And I like to have it with me. It weighs a couple ounces, and we're not hiking the AT here, so I don't mind carrying a couple ounces just to have that. And the last thing, I, I always carry an extra, con I wear contacts, so I always carry an extra contact with me. I can't find my glasses, and I know that's silly walking off into the woods without your glasses, but I can't find them, so I'm bringing an extra contact just in case. I, I My vision's okay. I can walk around without my contacts in if I have to, but it's nice to have. Oh, and by the way, the earplugs are because there's a shooting range near where we're going, public shooting range, which is nice. That's new to me. We don't have those in Connecticut outdoor, just open kind of walk-in kind of things. Uh, but there is one there, so I'm just bringing some earplugs just to uh, just to be able to do that. We'll probably bring the gun and fire off a couple of rounds. We're not going hunting. We don't have a tag. So the gun will stay in the car while we're hiking. But we're driving right by the range. Might as well get half an hour of time into it. Just keep your skills fresh. All right, so it's funny. It doesn't seem like I'm bringing an awful lot. Oh, and by the way, yes, we're not hunting, but we're bringing scent away. Just so we're not disturbing other hunters and leaving scent trails and stuff like that. So, you know, just being responsible. Uh, making sure that we're, you know, doing the right thing. We will be wearing camo. We will be wearing our orange over it. Um, just so we're not spooking game and changing their patterns and their habits and so on. Now, it's funny. It doesn't look like I got an awful lot on here, but if I can get this open. I got it packed pretty good. So, I said earlier, you know, I know a lot of people look down on these packaged things. But I got this kit. I think it was $15. And it came with a bunch of stuff. And I packed a whole bunch of extra stuff into it. I figured you might enjoy seeing exactly how much. I'm gonna need room here. I'm gonna, let's make some room, because <laughs> I'm gonna fill this bed with stuff that I got in here. All right, so the cleansing wipes, uh, you get cut, cuts get infected, infection is bad. You can get sepsis, sepsis can kill you. Just a quick little clean of a wound can be enough to stop you from getting wound fever. Uh, you'd be surprised how even sharp thorns and stuff can injure you. There are cacti out here, all that kind of stuff. Uh, gloves, uh, you're hunting, they can be used for cleaning in an emergency. Somebody gets wounded, they can be used for touching them without transferring blood germs around, some neosporin. There's another safety blanket. I've been debating whether or not I'm going to keep it in here, but it seems kind of useful. It's just taking a lot of space in there. It's getting hard to close because I packed so much extra shit in there. Um, so I keep it, you know, it's an extra blanket, uh, you know, in addition to the other ones, so it's not doing any harm anyway. And let me get myself zoomed out a little and settled down a little. Sorry, I'm taking this on a cell phone, so I, I know the video's probably shaking all over, but look at, look at all the goodies I got in here. All right, you ready for this? So they had safety information, I, you know, I left it in there. What the hell? I, I, I was a Boy Scout, you know, my son was in Scouts. We know a lot of this stuff. Stay calm. Don't freak out. Don't run away from a bear. Well, <laughs> give you something useful to do with the last seven seconds of your life. But um, anyway, keep it in there just because you never know who's going to be open in this thing. And it could be useful. Sometimes you just get panicky and reading the thing is good. Stand-up water bag. That's nice. That came with the kit. Um, and somewhere down in here we have some pellets. I carry a pen everywhere I go, big old Sharpie. It's the best kind of pen. You can mark stuff on trees. Everybody's all like, you know, oh, okay, make a blaze on the tree to let people know where you went. Nothing lets people know where you went, like saying, I went that way with a big ass pen. Um, fishing kit. Um, you know, so this is... This fishing kit honestly was the inspiration for this video because I, I, I was telling my son about why we were carrying it. I am not actually a great fisherman. I fished a lot when I was a kid. I caught plenty of fish. But I'll tell you, I am so mixed about fishing as an actual emergency survival tool. And here's why. There are plenty of great fishermen that buy hundreds of dollars worth of equipment, get out on a boat, have sonar, do all the rest of that still come back empty-handed or come back with something that isn't big enough to eat, right? So you, sitting in the middle of the woods with plenty of other stuff to worry about, you know, shelter and, you know, heat and firewood and all the rest of that are going to sit there for six hours trying to catch one little panfish. And I'm not that great at it. I'm okay. I, I've caught plenty of fish in my day, but I've also come back empty-handed plenty of days if you are not going to eat for that day because you couldn't catch one scrawny-ass little fish, how much is this actually going to help you? You want to know why I carry it anyway? Because it's tiny. 
A rifle is a lot bigger. And yeah, it'll feed you, but it's a lot bigger. You can't fit it in the tin. And you can fit this in a tin, and you got the fishing line. Fishing line can be used for so many things. This is braid. Braid is incredibly strong. So um, you can be used, you can make a tourniquet out of this if you have to, and the paracord's not handy. You can do all kinds of things with that. Um, I got plenty of fish hooks. Why not? They're small, they're light, they're cheap. Uh, I had them anyway. I got a couple of different sizes. I got a bobber, I got some lures with a head for them. Uh, I have enough in here where if I had to, I could get a stick, make a pole, do some fishing, and maybe I could catch something. And you know what? It takes so little space, why not? Now, meds. Okay, so I got my thoughts on meds. Uh, here's what I got in here, and I've got it very clearly labeled. You can see. I carry glucose tablets. Not everybody does that. You never know when you're going to be hiking somebody who's a diabetic or some other kind of issue along those lines. Or you just think your blood sugar's low. You're not thinking well. Maybe you're making some bad decisions. You get yourself into an emergency situation. Things aren't going right. You're out of food. You're starting to panic a little bit. This is 1,000 grams of glucose. It will perk you up like nothing's business. Nobody's business. Um, if you're having a, somebody's got into some diabetic shock, anything along those lines, these things will save their life. So it's funny, two little pills, they actually can be really useful emergency things. And no emergency kits carry those things. I don't understand why. Um, this is aspirin. It's pretty much the only analgesic I'll take. Uh, aspirin's useful if you're having a heart attack. Aspirin will take the sting out of a bee sting, and aspirin can be used to just generally relieve pain. There's plenty of it in here. Um, I don't carry Tylenol. Uh, I know everybody's got different beliefs on that kind of stuff, but I just like aspirin. I, I think it's multi-use product, and this way I got just one thing to carry. And I got a, a pill of phasine. You know, you get out in the woods, you eat something bad, you get some, some bad gas, and that can double you over. It can put you out. You know, I... I I don't know about you guys. Every now and then I get I get pretty bad gas and it's tough. You don't want to be hiking with that. And and that's, you know, that's a bad day. So uh, I carry a pillow that it works real fast. Um, this is the same stuff they put in the baby formula too, but this is the adult dose. And, uh, you know, you can always cut it down if you need to. And that's simethicone, by the way. Um, <clears throat> and I just think it's a useful thing. I don't carry like hardcore meds. No, opioid, no opioids, nothing illegal, nothing in that category. It's just simple stuff, but it can be useful. Aspen can save your life in a heart attack. I got some Band-Aids here. These are not my only Band-Aids. I got a whole kit of that here, you know, just a separate kit. Because we are backpacking again. I got the room. This only weighs a couple ounces. This actually probably only weighs one ounce, just plastic with a couple Band-Aids. But I keep it. Uh, but I keep, carry a few extra in here just in case I ever lose that or forget to bring the other one. This is my actual emergency kit. And this is the one that I expect to, you know, to be saving the bacon. Um, Band-Aids can be useful. You know, you can suture with them. A uh, guy, Army Medic, taught me how to make uh, butterfly stitches doing this. You take a razor blade, you slice the Band-Aid into really, really thin strips. You can use it to pull a wound closed temporarily. It's not perfect, but uh, a Band-Aid can be a really useful thing. It's not just for little boo-boos. Water purification tablets, I don't carry a whole bottle because I don't expect this to be my water source. You don't see any water on the bed only because we pack it in the morning, but right before we go. Uh, we'll be carrying plenty of water. We'll both have a couple liters. My son will be carrying a camel back because he's not carrying a backpack. So he'll have a couple of liters on him, I think 1.75, and I'll carry a couple of liters on me. My backpack has some nice side pouches here that I can put bottles into. Uh, I usually put a couple of one liter bottles in the side pouches and then a bottle down in the main in the main pack but we carry water purification tablets they'll purify a liter each there's two tablets and i got the water bag here carrying the extra water bag is nice you know you put mucky water in your water bottle and then you're thinking about your water bottle from then on and whether it's still good um this pack is just you know your your backup plan so that you lose your water bottles that you lose your pack you know anything along those lines you got that so Purify the water. I do actually have a couple more Band-Aids. A big one. Okay, man. Let's take a look at what else is in here. So, duct tape. This came with the kit. I would have carried duct tape anyway, but it came on a nice little roller. Uh, I don't know what the roller is for, why it's got that little hole in the middle, but that seemed kind of useful, and I figured it could be, I don't know, something for something, a straw maybe. But uh, duct tape. Carry duct tape. You can use duct tape as a Band-Aid if you have to. A um, couple of sources of fire. This came with the kit. It's a little sparker. 
I don't know why people love sparkers. I love lighters. These things cost 10 cents a piece. You can buy a five pack for a dollar. They last forever. I'm not a smoker, so uh, they never run out. I've had lighters that I've used years later. They don't leak or anything. They're, they're sealed up pretty good. And they, they make fire. You, you, you push this lever and you have fire. It's amazing. Um, but multiple sources just in case the thing does burn out. So you do have the nice little sparker here and you can use that. Uh, Tinder Quick, everybody's in love with that. I like Tinder Quick too, it's fine. Um, but I also carry a couple of extra things. I got bad teeth, so I carry some toothpicks. Just in case I get something stuck in there, tooth pain can be debilitating. Uh, and toothpicks can also be used as Tinder. Um, real simple, super dry, and they're in there. And, and I don't know why people don't carry these. I never see them in packs, but I love these things. It's a little tea light. This thing, you light this, this will make fire for 10 minutes. Then it'll go out because it'll have used up all its wax. They burn pretty quick, but they burn quick and hot. They'll give you a little bit of light in an emergency. And if you're trying to start a fire, nothing starts a fire better than fire. Okay, you can mess around with tinder and sparkers and all the rest of that and get little flames going. Nothing lights a fire faster than taking a lighter, lighting a candle and sticking that under something. 10 minutes is enough to dry out even wet wood and get that going instead of sitting here screwing with this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't think this is useless. I like it. It's great. I'm going to keep it. I'm not throwing it out, but I carry one of these and you know what? They're super useful. Um, this came with the kit. Um, you know, howler, rescue howler. That's great. We're going to be a couple of miles from people but uh, and over some mountains, but uh, you know, good to have a whistle to let people know where you are. Uh, I carry a razor blade. Um, just a simple little, you know, scraper style razor blade. Um, and, uh, you know, it's pretty sharp. I don't use it for much. So, uh, I, I always keep a fresh one and this can be used for cutting cord. If you lose your knife, it can be used for doing all kinds of things, slicing band-aids into ribbons. Uh, you can use it for shaving wood, uh, to make more tinder, uh, just to get some, some wood shave. Wood shavings are amazing at starting fires. They're way better than any tinder. Um, you take a... A piece of wood, you start shaving away at it and, and make it all furry. And even wet wood will light that way. Um, so that's a razor blade, super useful if your knife's dead. Plus a razor blade, you know, no, I know there's some people with scary sharp and stuff like that sharpening knives. I'm decent at sharpening a knife. I'm not amazing at it. This thing is sharper than any knife I could sharpen. It comes out of the box like surgery sharp. So that is a good thing to have floating around in there. And, you know, it's, it's got the little notches and stuff. I could tie it to a stick or something if I had to. I carry some wire. This came out of a piece of Cat5 cable. A little copper wire. I think it's 22, probably 24 gauge maybe. 24 AWG. Um, little double, you know, it's twisted pair, so it's two pair. I, I don't know if it'll focus very well, but there's an a orange one and a white one. I like the orange, safety orange. Uh, I can tie it to a tree, mark my way, do all that kind of stuff. You can make a tourniquet out of it. Wire holds its shape, unlike string. Uh, if you need to tie something up, if you need to make an emergency sled, sledge, sling, any of those kinds of things, you need to fix some of your equipment, wire's great. So I carry it. Don't need to talk about it too much more. Carry a couple of safety pins and some paper clips. Never know when some stiffer wire will come in handy and safety pins can fix all kinds of things and I carry some rubber bands. Believe it or not, all that stuff did fit in this tin. This tin is very, very tight, but it does crush down pretty good. And uh, that's why I bought it. Honestly, it was for the tin. It had some things that I wanted to get anyway. It wasn't real expensive. I didn't buy it for the duct tape. I've got miles of that. I buy it by the bulky pack from Harbor Freight. But it, it was a nice tin. I did want the stand-up bag anyway. So it had that. It had this. It had the sparker. I mean, my experience is when the lighter runs out, you can use a lighter as your sparker. So uh, I carry the lighter anyway, but the sparker, what the hell? Um, yeah, so that's all my stuff. This is what we're going out with. This is what we're bringing back. I expect to bring back 100% of it, mostly unused, but uh, it'll be there if I need it. So hopefully this wasn't too rambly. I know I went on for about a half an hour. Uh, for all of you who are curious, um, this is what I bring into the woods, and I pretty much bring the same stuff every time. Thanks for watching.